If lines are single segmented objects connecting to points, then polylines are line segments in a connected sequence created as a single object. That means that they are lines or even arcs with multiple vertices. Polylines are great for drawing contour lines, wire diagrams, piping drawings, extrusion profiles, pathways, or closed objects. So when a polyline is closed, it means that there is no real beginning or end. It's called a polygon, essentially, or a many-sided shape. Now, you can create a polyline with several different commands. P-line or Pline command, the rectangle command, which is the rectangle command. It's actually a polyline, not a rectangle object. You can use the polygon command, the donut command, the boundary command, and the rev cloud. It's a revision cloud for marking up drawings with. Most of the time, though, you're going to use P-line or Pline. That's the most common used command to create a polyline with. And we'll talk about some of the other options in later sections. So drawing a polyline can be accomplished using the exact same methods that we use to draw a line object with. After all, a polyline is essentially just a set of lines connected together. So you can go up to the Home tab on the ribbon and go to the Polyline command, which is found in the Draw panel and you draw it just like you would any other line. But when you select it, it's one object. Now a line, if I were to draw a similar shape very quickly here, looks about the same, but each one of these segments is its own object. That's the main difference. And that's really cool because you can do a lot of different things with a polyline, but a line gives you more control of the individual segments. So it just depends on what you need to draw. Now, you can draw a polyline, or pline, as they're often called, because you enter the pline command, or P-L-I-N-E, or P-line. You can draw them using coordinates, relative coordinates, polar coordinates, length, etc., just like we did with the line command. One difference, though, is that plines can also be drawn as arcs. Now, you can switch between a line to an arc to a line while drawing a polyline. Let me show you. So if we start the polyline command, you can just type in pline on your command line, or use the shortcut key, which is just pl. Pick your first point, and your second point, there's your line. Now if you have options, remember there are always options for a lot of commands. Now if I click on the arc, I'm now drawing an arc and it just continues on. Now these arcs, if you draw them in sequence, will be sinuous or tangent. They'll be tangent to the first arc that was drawn. Now if you wanna draw a line, you just type in L or you pick line on the command line option and it starts off drawing it as a line, not as an arc. Now that line will not be tangent to your previous arc. You can always switch, just type in A, type in L again, and then press enter to end your command. After you draw a polyline, you can use the polyline edit or the pedit command, P-E-D-I-T, P-Edit. Press enter, select your polyline, and you have a lot of different options that you can choose from to make some changes to your polyline. Now you can close a polyline into a polygon with the close option. See it? found the open segment in our shape and filled in the blanks. Went from point to point with a straight line. Of course, you can always undo something that you have just done. Now, if you have multiple lines, arcs, or polylines, you can use the join option. Let me show you. So up here, we have all of these individual lines. I can convert them to polylines and join them all together to be one shape similar to this first object. So I'm going to type in the pedit command. I'm going to select an object. And because it's not a polyline, AutoCAD is going to ask me, hey, do you want to convert this into a polyline? I type in Y for yes. And then I can click on the join option. And I just pick all of the lines or objects that I want to join together. Press enter, press enter again. And now all of those individual lines have been joined together to form one polyline. And you can do that with any type of line object or polyline or arc. Now you can edit a polyline's vertex just by grip editing it. 
So if I select a polyline, I have endpoints which look like these little squares or midpoints which look like those rectangles. If I hover over them, I will get some options. I have the stretch vertex option, add vertex or remove vertex. Now the add and remove are actually quite simple. If I select the remove, it gets rid of it. If I come back up to this top one and go to add vertex, it allows me to add another vertex, sort of breaking that line and creating a vertex point. Now if I click on the stretch option, it allows me to move it to wherever I want. So that's an endpoint. If I go to a midpoint, I essentially have the same options. I can stretch it, which allows me to move it, and wherever it's connected to is going to move with it relatively. I can add a vertex, just like that, or I can convert to arc. That will change it to an arc, and I just define the radius by moving my mouse. Now the arc's midpoint is exactly the same, except it allows me to convert it back to a line. So if I pick that midpoint, it's a move. If I just pick the vertex, it's a move or a stretch. But if I hover over it and click Add Vertex, I can at any time. Now it's the same way regardless of what type of polyline that it is. You can add a vertex right to this center arc, and it kind of creates two different arcs, which is kind of cool. You can get some very interesting shapes created very quickly. I can quickly stretch and change and edit these shapes and make some fantastic designs. Polylines are created the same way that lines are created, so you can go back to that section and see how you would draw a line, but it has a lot more options to it, a little bit more versatility, and it creates closed objects which you can use to find things like area of that shape, etc.